up at the New York Times dining section when we heard that an hour-long uh, talk show all about food was going to replace all my children on WABC. We were like, mm, that's not going to be pretty. <laughs> that is not going to work. You were not alone. Um, <laughs> yep. And uh, I went to visit the set, remember, the very yeah. beginning. And I was like, well, you know, I find this very interesting, but we're going to see. And I'm Oh, just no. Gonna... You sat there the taste of the girl. You were a little <laughs> perplexed. You were just like, what the hell are they doing? <laughs> well, you're the two cast members who actually are working chefs who have restaurants. Does that make a difference? Do you think that that sort of keeps your cooking real in a way? You work so hard as a chef to, like Lola is my most fine dining restaurant. You work so hard as a chef to build your reputation as a chef and hope you win f beard awards and food and wine awards and articles from the New York Times and all these things. And, and most of the food that you're doing at, at Lola or Babo or, you know, are highfalutin foods. Um, well put. And those aren't the foods that you should necessarily be cooking on television and teaching Americans how to cook. Are they fun to do on television every once in a while? Yes. But what, what I feel now my job as a, as a chef is, is to hopefully take people that, that maybe went out and got fast food five days a week and are like now have a family and kids and they want to start getting in that kitchen and cooking a little more and making food that is made from scratch and very approachable and is delicious and they could get it on their, their table. Um, and it was hard for me to get that kind of through my head. But at the end of the day, the food that I make on the show, and I think the food that Mario makes on the show often too, it, you might find it in some of our restaurants, but you'll more than likely find it on our dinner tables. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think for the most part. It's the food that I cook for Lizzie and Kyle, and I think a lot of the food MB cooks for the boys and, and Susie. So it, it's, it's about kind of, you still want to teach the right lessons that you taught your cooks as a chef, mm -hmm. um, but maybe the food is a little um, more homey. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. The food we make on the show is actually delicious. Right. And it's, insp it's inspirational in that literally in either one or two, four to six minute segments, we make something that you could really make in just about that amount of time. We don't use a lot of swaps. And that's, I think, the success of the show is that you can really make the food and you can really see how easy it is, even in the hands of restaurant people. It's not so much restaurant food. Right. It's the home food. It's, and, but, and, and I also think, too, that, that uh, you know, the, the great thing about the chew that I've noticed is over the years, cooking shows to me have gotten too pretty, hmm. too perfect, too you know Martha or what? How, whatever. So you, you want mean to call what we call? Um... <laughs> <laughs> he said it. I didn't say a damn thing about Martha. Um, but um, no, but I mean about like you know we would. It, it, it would take six hours or eight hours or three days to make a single show. Mm -hmm. And there were tons of swap outs and beauties and shots and mm -hmm. things coming in and out. On the chew, we start cooking, we finish cooking, and like Mario said, 80% of the time, the food that we're eating is the food that we cooked, unless mm -hmm. it's a long roast chicken or a braise or something of that. But like that pizza that you were making, it was kind of messy. Right. <laughs> it, didn't look, it wasn't like, wow, that's so beautiful. Right. Oh, I want to do that. Well, no, it should be real. Right. Inspiration. It looked real. And right. if something falls, it falls. If something spills, if we sneeze, we sneeze. If we try to drink a beer and we choke on it, it happens. Like, <laughs> it's all happening like real life. And, but and it's I not think, live. Right. Correct. Um, but it's, it's live to tape. tape. So it's, it, it, it mm -hmm. tapes like, it feels like live. Just like Fallon's not live, just like Letterman's not live. Mm -hmm. But it's live and then there's a live audience and it's, it's actually happening in real, time. in real time. When we go away on a break, that's, it's, the lo it's as long as the commercial is. Mm -hmm. So we come back and it's back, you're, you're right there. Well, let's talk about authenticity because I think that used to be like, you know, when Pablo opened, I remember people would be like, but that's not authentic Italian. This is a problem. Um, and you know, you cooking sort of from your ethnic roots. Do you think that all that stuff is, people are more flexible about that now that we've taught, that, that they've learned that? I think as people have tried, in, in, in the 15 years that Bob has been open, uh, the, America has become much more sophisticated about their dining habits. They've also traveled more and they know the difference between spaghetti and meatballs and the food from Puglia. Mm. They have a higher level of expectation, but they're also more flexible in understanding that even though the only tagliatelle that you might have in Bologna is going to be green when it's served with a ragu bolognese, the fact that we serve pappardelle doesn't necessarily diminish that deliciousness. And the fact that we made the noodle in the same way and it's a little wider and it happens to be the way that the chef likes to eat it mm -hmm. can or doesn't have to work. And I remember um, 
Jeff Steingarten came in and he's like, well, Mario, this is not exactly absolutely <laughs> traditional. And I'm like, yeah, but Jeff, is it good? And he said, yes. And I said, all right, that's all I want to know. Mm -hmm. And authenticity as a starting point, as the kind of cornerstone that you build a restaurant on is important. But the opportunity to kind of step out of that. I mean, keep in mind right now in Bologna, probably most of the kids would rather eat curry risotto than tortellini and brodo because their mom makes tortellini and brodo and they always have it on Sunday. So when they go out, they don't give a damn about authenticity. They're looking for something that challenges them or provokes them or gives them a little pick of interest. But that doesn't diminish the greatness of the original thing, but it also shows that everybody's willing to try it out. So authenticity in Bologna right now, maybe 30% of the restaurants have something with curry on it that is just perplexing to the Luddites that work in all of the press because they're like, oh, I can't believe we went to Bologna and they had curry in the risotto. I'm like, well, you went to the wrong damn place, man. <laughs> but authenticity is what it needs to be. And, and, and the chef can use it and the customer can ask for it or not ask for it. But like at Lola, you don't do all Eastern European meats, but you have a great market there that makes Eastern European meats. Well, and, and also, I, I think that you have to remember that if you went to um, sp specific parts of Eastern Europe or Italy or Greece and, and you embrace the Greek their food, card and you <laughs> embrace their food and you know in Italy chances are you're not going to find a pasta with corn in it but in America where corn is plentiful and beautiful and substantial and if they had that in Italy mm -hmm. the same way there would be tons of pastas with corn in it so it's it's taking what you learn from those cultures and and making them work from where you're from i mean i think that is the what farm to table food is all about. It's about knowing that the region, I know you hate that word. <laughs> but, but I, I, but what does it go if it doesn't go from the farm to the <laughs> From the, from the farm to the toy factory okay. to the circus to the table? Like, what do you mean? Regional, I hate regional, that. I know, but, but about, it's, about, it's about knowing the ingredients that we're... Wait, no, the I'm going to finish. Wait, no, no. I know. Uh, the, the, the regions that you're from and the ingredients that are... are indigenous. Indigenous to the region are the ones that you should be cooking with. You know, and, and whether you're cooking in an Italian style or Greek style or Eastern European style, it's, it's taking the, the, the techniques and the love of that food and making it work in the region that you're in. Let's talk about fancy chefs just for a bit because there is this... Um... Do you know some? <laughs> <laughs> Once you're sort of doing the kind of stuff that you guys do, do you feel like you can still be in that club of the foragers and the guys with the special herbs? It's, I'll say this thing. No, there is a, this very sort of precious movement right, right. now. Right, there's a precious movement of people mm -hmm. that travel around with Rennie Redzepi and they go to these special symposiums in Brazil or I'm going Copenhagen, on exactly. <laughs> and, and they're great. And, and, and the funniest thing about all of that intellectual movement is that it's still fundamentally, uh, I mean, all of our best work mm -hmm. tomorrow is poop. <laughs> because our job is to create something that your body consumes and then gets rid of. And as long as you don't confuse us with Brock or Leger or Picasso, then we're on the right path. But it's the people that have elevated the cooking world to be something so important. It's merely dinner. And hopefully it's dinner that's going to be shared by you and some friends. And if we all understand that, then we're on the right playing field. If we're putting us up there, not so interesting. We're in poop production. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, there's, there's a lot to talk about, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's what's on the plate. And I think that's why the business is good. Mm -hmm. The restaurant business is great right now because people either want to enjoy it on the very simple level that they're going out to have something to eat with their friends, or they want to go to a restaurant that won't allow them to take photography and won't allow them to talk between each other, between <laughs> courses. And there's, 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 there's a giant spectrum between those two points. And hopefully we're promoting the idea that food is simple and delicious and easy, accessible and within your realm. You mean the asparagus that looked like the tomato didn't fill you up? Exactly. Yeah. Pretending to be a fish and talking like meat. <laughs> Whoa.